Okay, and our uh, meeting chairman is stuck in traffic. He'll be here as fast as he can. So I will call the PNRD meeting to order for January 10th. And uh, I think we're all here about the town or the uh, chairman and he will be here. So approval of the minutes. I'd like to make a motion. I'll make that motion. Okay, is there a second? And I will second it. Any corrections or additions? If not, they will be approved as stated. Um, I think for the public comments that we will wait and do it a little bit later, but we, we will do it. We'll go right to the public hearing. And uh, can you lead us on that then? Do you have to do I that? can. Okay, well, so. Okay, I, I guess I'm supposed to say some things here. <laughs> Will you just let me know when you're ready for me? Well, okay. <laughs> and this will be your only, at the public comment for the public hearing, this will be the only time to speak on that matter. Um, I think we'll just go right to you and lead us on that as best as you can. Okay, so we have a rezone request today for um, a property in the town of Menominee. Um, it's approximately four acres and is currently zoned general agriculture. Um, the requested zoning is general commercial. It's currently being taxed as commercial property and partially other. Um, a class two notice was published in the Colfax Messenger and the Tribune Press Reporter on December 21st and December 29th, 2022, establishing a public hearing on January 10th, 2022, during the Planning Resources and Development Committee. Um, neighbors within 300 feet were also notified via certified mail. Um, so originally this application was submitted by the United Way of Dunn County um, it's they're currently leasing the building that's located at the property um, and they intend to purchase this possibly from the current owner. The proposed use includes a meeting facility, banquet and event center, a donation center, a business office and tavern, and that will serve food and liquor for the purpose of fundraising. Um, these uses are only allowed in the general commercial zoning district. So some history of the property that I've found. Um, the subject property is currently general egg. The past zoning of the restricted or the past zoning of the property was restricted commercial. Um, this was changed to general agriculture during the comprehensive rezone that occurred in 2014. Um, the past and current use of the property has been commercial, although the specific commercial use has varied. There's a ball field and parking lot that surround the main structure. And this currently houses offices and a kitchen, bar and dining area. The current usage of the surrounding parcels has been for crop production. And the property is just off State Highway 29 on 410th Street, also known as Midday, Midway Road. While the properties directly adjacent to the property are all zoned general ag, the land directly across Midway Road is within the city of Menominee municipal boundary and zoned as agricultural and general industrial. <clears throat> um, so I'll just go through some of the technical review findings. Um, so looking at compatibility and consistency, this property has been operating under commercial use for mo for many, many years. Um, the specific use has been altered. Um, the previous use as a bar and restaurant is not considered legally non-conforming at this point as it's been discontinued. Um, the proposed use as an event center would not work under the general agriculture zoning but it would work under the proposed uh, general commercial. <clears throat> so 
so the development trends in this area, adjacent land is zoned as general ag, land across the highway from the subject property, agricultural and industrial. The current and past use of the property is commercial and development trends in this area are leaning toward industrial, but also remaining agricultural. Um, if you look at the Dunn County Comprehensive Plan, um, the plan identifies the area as future farmland with areas very nearby as future commercial development within a quarter mile. Um, exhibit five in your packet would show that map for you if you'd like to take a look. So based on this map and the information in the comprehensive plan, um, we've concluded that the proposed rezone is consistent with the county's vision for future development of the subject area. <clears throat> Um, I just wanted to bring up, there were some changes just right before the meeting that I kind of want to address a little bit here. Um, the original immediacy in this situation was due to the current leaseholders um, closing date for the property of January 31st. Um, the expectation was that the United Way would be able to present this request to the town before today's hearing. Um, for whatever reason, the town has not yet met publicly. Maybe someone here can speak on that. Um, and then further complicating this, I received an email last Friday letting me know that the United Way was possibly backing out of the purchase and would no longer be applying for the rezone. However, the property owner is still interested in pursuing the rezone, so we're moving forward. Oh. Um, as members of the PRND committee, you know it is not required by county ordinance or statute that a rezone applicant receive an opinion from the town before the PRND hearing. However, zoning staff strongly recommend this to all applicants. Um, the information provided in the town's recommendation is certainly helpful and many times absolutely necessary for the PRND to make an informed decision. And ultimately, we know that if the town disagrees with the county's decision, they do have the ability to reverse the decision by ordinance. So for whatever reasons, you know, that's something we can address here. But ultimately, it is the zoning staff's recommendation based on the analysis and technical review in the report um, to approve the rezoning amendment of the subject parcel from general agriculture to general commercial contingent upon a recommendation of approval from the town of Menominee. And then in your packet, I do have the findings listed. I can go through those if you like and answer any questions you might have. I don't think so, unless there's any questions from the committee members. Um, uh, uh, just to the end, or, or is anybody here representing the manager? There might be people here that want to speak on this. I'll wait till then. So I have like you two questions, Anne. When you said that it was published in the two papers, does Menominee still have a paper? The Dunn County News or? So the Dunn County News, um, the deadlines we were using for them with PRND weren't working out. Oh, so okay. we chose to go with two newspapers instead of one. Um, okay. I just think like, like those two newspapers are pretty far north and this year is you know, right in your backyard. So yeah. Um, the other question is, oh, there Tom is, is would the committee like to postpone it until we get some recommendation from the uh, Menominee Town Board? May I? Yes, you may. Uh, especially considering now with the possible pullout and uh, with uh, the owner wanting to do it now, maybe uh, this just doesn't seem like a time to make a decision. Uh, we have basically never done that before. No. Uh, and according to Frank, uh, the town chair, they hadn't even been contacted. Uh, I do think that we should hear from the applicant if they were right. interested okay, in idea. commenting on this. But, but uh, just uh, so before we make any. Thank you. We're talking right now. Uh, the actual quote was, Mike, they have not approached the town with this request. So uh, there needs to be some communication going on here. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear from uh, who's here. But one one comment, uh, I noticed that in requesting the rezoning in order to purchase the property, they don't need to have it rezoned even if they do decide to purchase it. Um, and the 
tavern, there is not necessarily going to be uh, a liquor license or, or a beer license because that's gone by and the town has the option of either granting that or not. So there's so much right here that is unknown. Um, and you know, I hate to bring it up again, but the map, the planning map that uh, was used was based on the 2015 zoning. And now we have different zoning for general commercials. So it's just so much up in the air that uh, I would hope, uh, unless uh, people speaking now or can say we need to go ahead, but I, I don't see how we how we really could. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Or um, and perhaps we can hear this from the applicant, but but uh, Supervisor Kinnear is right. There's so much that is unknown here. Is there any particular um, immediacy on the part of the current applicant? I'm not sure. I don't think so. If the uh, the buyer might be backing out, so right now might be a good time to have any uh, people that would like to speak on this uh, public hearing. So come on up. <laughs> so you just got to swear him in, Tom. Sir, there's two buttons on the mic that you, sir, if you push the right hand button. My name is Rich Ellison. Oh, okay. <laughs> You swear that your testimony today will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm the listing broker for the property. Uh, again, the name is Rich Ellison. I've been working with the United Way for approximately one year. And United Way's intent is, is to buy the property and to use it for the purposes that were in the application. And I assisted with him in filling out the application uh, for them and also for the owner, Earl Wildenberg. Um, United Way right now informed us that they may not be able to buy the building because uh, a shortage of cash. And they're going to know more uh, next week. Uh, their minimal intent for the property is to continue to operate what they call the C3 center out of that property. And Earl had been gracious enough to rent it to him at a discounted rate uh, until they can come up with the cash to be able to do the purchase. And they have been approved by the bank. Uh, what's going to happen in the future, whether it's leased or rented uh, or purchased, we really don't know at this point. But the property has been commercial since 1993. And at that time, it was zone restricted commercial. And as for communication with, with the township, I uh, initiated uh, communication with the township in October. I talked to Sharice, the town clerk, asked her about the zoning, zoning change. She said she had checked with Frank. I met with Sharice a few days after that personally, talked to her, and she said she had informed Frank and is waiting for a reply. Uh, early November, I got a voicemail message from Frank that said the township's not involved in the zoning, that I need to work strictly with the county. So we worked very closely with the county and with Ann on it. Uh, completed an application uh, throughout the whole process. We were emailing Sharice and, and Frank on what we're doing and requesting also that the request go through the township. And that was in uh, October and November. And finally, we found out uh, from Ann, who's been wonderful to work with, that the uh, township needs to state that uh, they're willing to approve or consent to the change. Uh, we got an email from Frank saying that he saw no issue uh, with the zoning going back to commercial. So that was our process. Uh, and then we found out that we 
needed to be on the agenda or we weren't on the December agenda. Uh, I found that out from Ann. So we contacted Frank and he informed us it was too late to go on the December agenda. It would have to go on the following agenda. And then we found out in January that the request was not on the January agenda. And uh, I made several calls, uh, sent emails again, what's happening. And I got a call from Kent Jackson telling me that uh, we never filled out an application form or followed the application process. And I said, what in the blankety blank uh, has to do an application process? We've been talking to everybody at the township in the county, but nobody from the township informed us of an application process. And uh, he said he would send us the application pro in the process, which was we have to uh, put the request in, notify all the property owners within a thousand feet of the subject property. And I did that all within 48 days of getting the application, we got it out. And uh, the other thing that uh, for the township's benefit, I said, we, we checked, no one ever told us about an application. We checked the township's website. There was no application mentioned on it. And, and Ken said, well, we, we never put the application or the process on the township's website. So really nobody's aware that an application needs to be completed, but we've been in contact with Sharice, with Frank and, and Kent on this since October. And the goal is to be able to get this thing changed uh, quickly. If it happens that United Way does not decide to, to buy it or decides not to rent, uh, we still need to be able to get the zoning change uh, approved. It's been a commercial property uh, since 1993. It's designed as commercial. And many of you have probably been out there when it was fuzzies or, or something else. So really, our, our goal is to get this change and, and correct the uh, the mapping year that, that happened in 2014 when it went from restricted to commercial to aid. That's all I have. And I know the owner, Earl, would like to address the committee. You want to address the committee? Yeah, thank you very much. Curious, sure. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for. Really, I got to swear you in. <laughs> Again. <laughs> do you swear your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. My my name is Earl Wildenberg. Um, I'm a, one of the members of the Willaro company that owns the said property. Um, and and I, I have kind of a, an interesting trend or path that I've taken. Um, I, I, I sat on a county board for 13 years as, as a supervisor. I also sat on a town board for about that same number of years and I also sat on the uh, land use committee with with Mike who spearheaded that as as a subcommittee Mike was the called the chairman of the subcommittee anyhow for that for that and I did not know that this got changed in 14 or 15 or whenever it was I did not know that and I sat on the committee and it is very disheartening to hear that in October of 2022, um, and and I had been dealing with uh, Rich and with uh, United Way about purchasing it, and I went with the with de dealt with the bank so that I I could help help them get along with their with their deal financially, and that was approved until October when basically the you know what hit the fan, and I didn't know about it until then, and. Rich was correct in trying to get a hold of the town, and we got and we did not get cooperative be co cooperation from the town chairman. That's a given. Um, and I would like to, I, I would like to um, 
make that clear that I, that I, I was not aware of this. Um, and I did buy the property in 2017 from, at that time, the Masonic Lodge owned it. Prior to that, there was another owner. And I, and I paid cash for it and proceeded to upgrade the kitchen and made that to state standards, state specs, so that it could be used without, without issue. And when I purchased it, or I shouldn't say I purchased it, when we purchased it, it was Willaro Incorporated, LLC. When we purchased it, um, the, the uh, Masonic Lodge hired uh, Venapool, which is a, a very good firm out of Eau Claire. They did the, they did the deed and abstract for that property. And all of their research came back as, as, a, as G2. And, and um, then, then I hired Weld Riley, who was a very good law firm, to bring it up to date for me. So I was comfortable with it. And, and um, the local Masonic Lodge hired, um, uh, what was her name? Parent and, and Bergfechtel. To bring it up, and I and I have I have all of their reports from from the from the uh, the uh, purchase offer to completion, and there was nothing ever mentioned about agricultural, ever, in in any of what I what I had, and and I talked to Ann, I'm not which one is Ann, you okay? <laughs> talked to you on the phone uh, when I found that out in October of this last year. And I was as dumbfounded as anyone, but I would sure like to. You, you can't you can't make a, a right by having having another wrong atta attached to it. And I think this is wrong, in my opinion, because they let me. I, I paid I paid commercial taxes. I paid for the liquor license. I kept the place up, and and it's owned uh, agricultural. There isn't a place where you could put a bean in the ground that would grow because it's parking lot. It's pavement. And the ball field is gravel, and it won't grow beans either. And you, Mike, and I sat at many, many, many meetings together on this on this rezone stuff. Many meetings, and I missed very, very few of them. And there was a point when, when uh, I was down in, um, it was either Austin or Houston, Texas. I was down down there to a international water convention, and, and, I'm, and I'm, that's that's my life is water and wastewater. And I got a call from Frank telling me that I was no longer on the board. I wasn't needed anymore. And Bob Colson got the same call. And, and you, you were there when we got our plaques of our, of our commendable service. And that really ticks me off. That, that kind of behavior goes on this day and age when we could use emails, we can use Zoom, we could... Uh, do personal contacts, and it didn't happen. And I and I and I, I told um, Rich that you know if there's a, if there's a fee, uh, I'll pay it. But I think it's, I think that's wrong also to have something that that blindsides you as hard as this did. Now you can look you can look back on my on my tax payments. You can look back on any of the payments that I've ever had to make to the town, and I've not been late. In fact, they're paid in full today, um, as well as my, as well as my town of Menominee, where my shop is. And you can look up the quantity of the dollar amount, and it's substantial. And I really am irritated with this. So I would ask that this be sent to the county board with a with a either a recommendation or a letter of intent or something to clear this up if we can. And, and I don't know how else to do it. And you know, even though I sat on a county board and sat on a town board for a lot of years, and, and I was president of the school board for nine years, so I'm not I'm not opposed to standing up in front of a group. I'm not opposed to doing Robert's rules, and I'm not opposed to doing what's right, if it costs me money, even. So, I guess that's where I'm at with it. Well, getting too hot about it. Thanks, Cheryl. Does the committee have any questions? 
Yeah, I hate to count the number of hours, Earl, that we did. Sure, but sure uh, so if United Way was to buy it, they can buy it, whether it's general com commercial or egg. That that's is that the case? I mean, th there's no stipulation they can't buy it if it's one or the other. No, no, it's not. But no, it's not. Uh, there's no there's no problem with that, in my opinion. OK, just the buying is, is what I was wondering about. Yeah, yes, yes. They could buy it if it was swamp ground, but it, but it's not. Um, the um, the the deal the deal is is the way the the way the loan is written, and it's still in in effect today. That it has to be done by the thirtieth of this month, and the way that this is transgressing or or aggressing or whatever, it's it's not progressing. It 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 eliminates it eliminates them from owning it at that point because of the timeline and, and the contract with the bank. And at that point, it cost me about $90,000. And I'd be glad to share that with you if you, ever want, if you wanted to see it. Because I, I just think, I think the ball got dropped and I think it's on somebody's toes and they don't want to, they don't want to admit to it. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Earl. Thank Appreciate you're it. Welcome. By the way, I did I did I did bring a kitchen and everything up to state standards and that was a thirty some thousand dollar investment. Because I had um, I had um, stuff stuff wagon in there for several years. You know, we and then Cole was got in and we lost all the money that he drove to get to get. And granted, and granted, I didn't use I I used it like a little bit, and that was the way that not a, that's 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 and yet, it's, I think in your report, you had some uh, a listing of possible actions. There you go. Okay. Um, so anybody have any further comments or questions of Ann about it or, or thoughts to share with in the committee? May I? I'm, okay. I'm just uh, wondering if somebody could give like a two minute overview of what the uh, comprehensive rezone in 2014, what that was and the consequences of it, since that seems important here. It seems to be more familiar. Than, uh... Uh, the old uh, zoning ordinance was out of date. Uh, they had uh, different kinds of zoning, like uh, right now there's uh, a commercial, general commercial in the town of Sherman, which is... Uh, the vineyard, and that had uh, restricted, I think that was called restricted commercial, where they could say, this is the only thing you can use. And when that quits, it goes away and it goes back. Well, we don't have that anymore. Uh, it was general updating, just like we did with the uh, subdivision ordinance plan uh, in 2014. It was a total rewrite. And uh, then just like with the subdivision in 2017, they, they had other revisions. But uh, yeah, it was an update because it was out of date. Yeah, okay. I, I remember that part. Um, but it also sounds like you took individual properties and rezoned them according to some plan? Or Every township had to zone their township. So, uh, for example, I, Earl mentioned we sat and uh, we went through every single property in the town of Menominee. Uh, we had multiple public hearings. Uh, we had open houses uh, for people to come in. And I, I'm assuming most of the townships did that. Ours is a little bigger, so we might have done more of it. Um, we rezoned. Uh, and then after it was rezoned and okay by the county, people came in and said, ooh, I didn't know about this. And we said, we understand. Uh, we will rezone it in the county and the township. I think did it for free. Uh, but that happened for a, a year or two. 
Uh, and some of these people, well, at least one had been on the county board. So they weren't people that were just not paying any attention. So uh, that's what every township did, parcel by parcel. Uh, and uh, they looked at all the things, of course, the land use plan and, and so forth. Uh, just while I'm talking again, uh, when, when Earl said it really hit him, you know, when I found out about the 2017 change in the multifamily housing, because we had spent so much time, it just hit me in the gut uh, that all our planning, all, all our maps and everything were now gone. So uh, I can understand it, Earl. Uh, but that, that's, that was the process that we did in the town of Menominee. So we we need to pick one of these uh, options. I just I mean I, I didn't hear the first part of the discussion, so I apologize. But uh, I am inclined to uh, since we've had the are having the hearing today um, to consider number two. Uh, in the it appears from the testimony we've gotten that that all. You know, that's not a it's this not a problem that this be zone commercial. No one is objecting to that that we know of. Uh, the process has in, tried to engage the town for whatever reason that hasn't been able to happen yet. Um, but I can't, I don't and and of course if the town does not want to see the rezone, they can they can uh, decline it uh, formally. But if they wanna go ahead, all they have to do is uh, send us the recommendation. So, so my my thought is is uh, that we since we had the hearing today, um, a lot of work has been done on this. There's no reason I can see not to move forward on it. If there is a reason that the town has, they'll have an opportunity to, to voice that. Um, but I would, personally suggest number two. Any Anybody else have thoughts? Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Diane. A, a, just a point of order. Do we need to uh, adjourn the public hearing before we move into uh, deliberation? You're right, of course. I'm not asking people to vote right now, Diane, just to express their opinion in general. All right, thank you, Tom. Uh, may I? Um, I feel bad for Earl, uh, Mr. Willenberg, uh, but right now things are so up in the air, whether the United Way buys it or not. Uh, they don't need it rezoned. Uh, Earl would like it rezoned. There is no um, urgency to have it done. Uh, there's just huge miscommunication. Uh, like I said, the, the 29th email from Frank <laughs> saying that they had not brought it to the town board yet. Um it just seems like we've we've always deferred to local control and let them do it first. Now, I, I know you can say, well, they can do this, but why should we make the, the town go through that? I mean, we can just say, uh, get it together. Um, and there's communications on both ends here. Okay. And then there's, well, let's just leave it at that. It seems like the best way to do it is to postpone it, uh, let them get their act, the town, and let them get their communications going. And uh, I don't see where there's any harm in that. Sure. I agree with Mike. I think um, that I'm I'm all for the rezone. I, I don't see any problem at all. The only problem I see is a precedent of going ahead and voting on it without the uh, town board approval. Or not, you know, something from the towns, so we have something going on. If we do it once, then it might come back to be uh, more times than not so but <clears throat> but I'd have no problem like you voting for for the rezone just that the president would be nice to have the uh, the message the intent of the uh, Menominee Town Board so I what I think I'm going to do is uh, take take Diane's suggestion and uh, if there are no other questions or comments, 
uh, close the public hearing, and then uh, we can move directly to to a decision, a discussion, more discussion and a decision. So with that, I'll, I'll close the public hearing. And then without objection, um, since Earl is here and people have taken time to come, uh, let's, uh, without objection, can we move the uh, 9B up to this point in the agenda? Hearing no objection. Uh, continue the discussion. Anyone else have any any comments about it before we decide? Um, Monica. I, I, I need to review. Um, it sounded like from the property owner when he spoke that it seemed like that was he was feeling some urgency, that there was a deadline of January 30th. Um, can somebody review what that point was? I kind of missed it. Or... We could ask him, but I thought it was when United Way wanted to buy it by that deed. But he's still on. I thought it was a like a loan was good up until then. Let's let's ask. Could, yeah. Could you clarify the January deadline that you're talking about? Yeah, that was um, that was what the uh, what the bank and, and we had that deadline for the paper towels. Okay. I don't know if that answers your question or not, Monica. Does... Um, I feel like my cast would be the same. Well, I don't know. I didn't answer the, the question. It was a good question. Um, so if United Way doesn't buy it, uh, Earl, do you lose the money? Sorry. I couldn't. I'm sorry. Yes, I do. If they don't buy it by January 1st, do you lose them? Uh, January 31st, do you lose the money? And they're not opposed to just moving forward with the development. Oh. I'm kind of wondering too, if we did pass this, it went on to the board, passed. Uh, if it went on to the town then and it didn't pass, it, it's just going to even make it longer than if we have the board take care of it now. Uh, it's not a good situation, but uh, I, I still okay. go with the last option. Diane, do you have any thoughts? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have been unable to hear the last part of the of the discussion. Can could you please repeat that um, Mr. Williamsburg yes. would lose his investment should the United Way not be allowed to purchase? Could you use the microphone and speak and speak up so everyone can hear? Sorry, sorry about that. Um, Yes, I would. I would lose. I would lose a large portion of my investment because the way that this was orchestrated with uh, with the bank and with United Way and with and with Rich, who who is not, he doesn't work for me. He works for for United Way. Um, that goes by the wayside. I lose my investment in in that and and the funding that I had given them for 
about seven seven months now with, with lesser rent so that they could so they could move forward and get their donations as needed for their for their um um nonprofit status and and and, and move on on good ground um but but yes that that would be that would be gone and the other thing the other thing that uh I, I mentioned when I first started was uh, if if we had something like a letter of intent or something like that. I'm not asking you to pass a pass a motion. I'm asking for like a, a letter of intent that wouldn't wouldn't commit anyone, but it but it's an intent, like like you've all like we've all done letters of intent or letter of understanding, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, so that Diane can hear the answer, Earl. Uh, so if. United Way is able to buy it in March. Would you lose your investment? No, not as long not not as long as the bank is on board with it. No, I would not. Okay. But 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 at present, the way it is written, the answer is I would, without a doubt. So that wouldn't depend on zoning. That would depend on United Way. And yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, the zoning, it, yes, it would. But it would it would allow us to move forward with with the bank and with United Way, and 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 it's unfortunate that we have to rework the rework it, but it does happen. Sometimes you have to plant your corn twice because it froze out, you know that kind of thing. Thanks. That it. Thanks, Ron. Okay. I apologize to the committee. I should have not have. Uh close the hearing because this obviously should have been part of the testimony from where else should have been part of the hearing um anyway here we are <laughs> uh any other discussion does anyone care to make a motion on this i know it's a mess but uh i move that we postpone it to give uh, one more chance to work with the township and that would be i don't know what was it number four number four yeah number four uh to postpone it date certain uh one month from now is so we have a motion to postpone is there a second i'll second that motion okay any further discussion Monica. Um, so I just, um, I, I, I trust Mike, right. It, as it sounds like you're the person, at least among the five of us that kind of knows the most about what's going on here. And so I just want to be very, I just want to make sure I'm understanding you correctly, that your assessment is that postponing it is not going to either increase or decrease his chances of losing a lot of money that our decision here, whether we do it today or a month from now, it doesn't matter. I think it would increase somewhat the chances the longer we delay it, but I don't, I think not enough to approve it today. Okay. Did that answer your question? That does answer my question. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion and a second to postpone to what would be the date, Ann? It would be February 20. January 23rd? Is that sufficient for the? One month The first month of February? Sorry. Uh, one month from now, that'd be the first meeting in February. So that would be the 13th of February, then a Monday. So we have a motion to postpone the hearing until uh, February 13th. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion, gentlemen, but we'll, I guess we will postpone the, the, uh, the, 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 
Let me see. Well, we can't postpone the hearing because we already had the hearing. Is it? I'm a, not thinking straight today. Is it? So. A, <laughs> yeah, postpone the vote, but is it a an open? We closed the hearing, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. But we can't continue it then. What's how's that work? We could reopen it, I suppose. I should have. I should have uh, waited. To, I'm sorry, we should have addressed that question, um, the question of postponement prior to adjourning. Um, All right, my bad. Yep. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's find, let's figure out the right way to move past this. Anybody in staff have suggestions or? Um, can we postpone? the are we having a I'm gonna, I'm gonna i'm going to uh take the the uh the the option of pardon the, the base commitment of financing to united way terminates on january 31st which means United Way has to reapply for the loan. This this should be this should be on. Yeah. I'm sorry, we uh, that, that's understood. But I think what uh, Mike, you want to comment? To that? No, I, I just think any comment should be yeah. heard by Diane. And if you want to go up to the, else, to but, the uh, microphone to make your comment, uh, we, we've kind of heard it all. And is there any problem with reopening the hearing? Okay, that's what we're going to do. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to reopen the hearing at this point in time and note that we have had some follow up discussion in uh, in our determination of action, and it makes sense to reopen the hearing and uh, uh, clarify where where we're at at this point in time. So the hearing is now reopened. Name? Uh, Rich Ellison. And Rich, you've already been sworn in, so I'll let you go. Let you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, United Way received the commitment of financing from Dairy State Bank. Uh, that commitment of financing uh, expires January 31st uh, with the offer. If they if the offer is terminated, they have to reapply to the bank. The terms of the original offer had a very low interest rate that was put together October of last year. Uh, interest rates now are more than double of what they were then for this type of property. Um, if United Way is able to go ahead and, and do the purchase, there's always a chance they wouldn't be able to because under the new interest rate and the new financing scenario, uh, they may not be able to acquire the property. It may not be financially feasible at that time. Uh, I've been in contact with Jody Carr, who's the loan officer at Dairy State Bank. I talked to her yesterday. And they have not been notified uh, by United Way that they're withdrawing their requests or not buying the property. Okay. Um, the concern about buying the property is something that Jennifer Thatcher, the executive director, uh, made to Ann, myself, and Earl. Uh, like, like I said before, they're still looking at ways to be able to generate the income to do it. But if it goes beyond January 31st, most likely their lending is going to be terminated because that's when the contract ends. Thank you. Questions? Does it matter if it's general commercial or uh, general ag for the loan? Uh, yes, the commitment had it as general, it needed to be general commercial. They had an appraisal done on the property. The property could not be appraised uh, for commercial use unless it was jo zoned general commercial. Uh, the appraiser was Gary Holt of Norby and Associates. And the uh, financing commitment is based on receiving an appraisal for the commercial use. We were notified, uh, all the parties were notified of that problem. 
So the appraiser is waiting for this. So you then issue a letter saying that the property is commercial and then it's in compliant with uh, banking criteria. And we, we have been in contact with the township going back to October and it's documented with emails, saved voicemail messages, everything on this. And we've copied Ann on almost all of them. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so now we're we're <laughs> still in the reopened hearing. <laughs> um, could, could I make a? a I we already made the motion and seconded and passed it. But a better motion would be to continue the public hearing till one month. It would. Yeah, I think that's the that would be the better motion. Yeah. So if you if you want to if you want to reconsider the previous motion, um, you would have to ha have uh, someone from like you, for example, someone who voted for it, uh, ask for it to be reconsidered, or any of the, any of the four of you that voted for it amended. Hmm? You mean amended or uh, or changed or deleted or. What? Well, the first action would be to, to, I think, to ask that it be reconsidered. That's a formality, a oh. parliamentary formality. So, uh, and then we would vote on that. Yes, we did that in the town, town, our county board, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, well, I would like to reconsider it. Um, uh, or I move to reconsider it. Or... Okay. So we have, we have a move to reconsider the previous action and i reconsider my uh, second to okay. motion okay and the seconder is also agreed so we uh i guess i'll take a vote on that in favor of reconsideration aye 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 okay. so uh <laughs> the previous action was to uh postpone action for additional information if necessary now that is, maybe that's okay. <laughs> um, so we could we could have a motion that would. What what do you what do you think? What is your intention, Mike? Well, my intention would be to uh, one month, uh, same date. <sighs> to continue the public hearing. Uh, and if after one month, nothing has happened, uh, we'd have to go forward. Uh, if both sides gave a, no, <laughs> not mine. If both sides gave a good effort, uh, we would then have more information we could decide. But my, my motion would be to continue the public, to, I don't know how you put it, but to continue the public hearing one month from today. Postpone action today and continue it, maybe is the better way of saying it. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Gary? Okay. Uh, discussion. And the date certain would be uh, February 13th, I think, right? Yeah. So that's our motion. That's, that, that's the discussion. <laughs> now we can't take that motion in. At that time, then, would we like vote on it, either yes or no, if nothing has been uh, no more like you new information? Right. So we'll take some kind of stand on it then. Okay. Okay. So all all in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 Okay. Within the hearing, then we decided to uh, to continue the hearing and postpone action and continue the hearing to February thirteenth. And I'll close the hearing. And we don't need to take any action then in regular session, I don't think. Ooh, sorry about the confusion. And then, Tom, uh, before you came, we didn't have any public comment other 
than on the uh, okay on the hearing. So okay, public comment like is like is still open or okay whenever you decide. Yeah. All right. Good. So that's where we are then. You did approve the minutes. Um, do you have anything? Okay. Uh, is there any public comment in general? Not on the minutes, but um, we're number point four. If you're at point yeah. So, does anyone have any public comments they want to make? Okay. Name and address when you get up there. Is this on? Yep. My name is Kelly Kraus. My address is E5287, 750th Avenue, Menominee, Wisconsin. I, and you guys were? No, not in, not need for that now. Oh, okay. <laughs> the topic I would like to um, go over a couple of things with and make my public comment on is the um, Lake District for the Tainter and the statutes of chapter 33. The proposal of the Tainer Lake Rehabilitation District has been a long thought out and organized initiative. One can see the amount of work it took for the organizers when reviewing the Wisconsin State Chapter 33 statutes, especially chapter 33.25, the petition. Just to highlight some of the petition's laborious initiatives and complexity, it needed 51% of the votes from the landowners defined, identification of the applicable landowners, valuation of the properties probably, signing of the petition, noticing people to attend meetings, and a number of other things about who owned the properties. All work that took a lot of time to do and a practice of following the Wisconsin statutes. There are a number of very important elements within the chapter 33. And why are they important? Because we here in Dunn County are very fortunate to live in a more trusted environment than most. And if we don't think that, we need to look around our environment in the world today. We are very fortunate people. I have found the residential property owners have come from a wide variety. I live on the lake. My uncle lived on the lake, built the house in 67. We are good, logical, and trusting people. Most have worked hard all of their life to finally be able to live on the Tainer Lake. The powers of the Lake District that are proposed, legislature has given the district a broad range of financial and administrative powers to undertake management programs. All Lake Districts in a roll-up piece of information have been provided this power, which is powerful. Levy of taxes and impose special charges and special assessments. Borrow money, disperse money, make contracts, accept gifts, I hold and sell property. Undertake projects to enhance recreational use. Sue and be sued. Take other acts necessary to carry out a program of lake protection and of those items on that sort. All documented under statute chapter 33, statute 33.21, Two, two, excuse me, statute 30.30, statute 33.32, statute 3331. I've referenced a number of Wisconsin statutes under chapter 33, and yet there's one very important one that I haven't singled out yet. It is chapter, subchapter 33.25, the petition. And here's what it reads. Withdrawing from petition, any landowner 
who is considered to have signed the petition under a subchapter may withdraw from the petition if the landowner owner files a written consent of withdrawal with the county clerk at least 10 days before the date of the hearing. Do you know how many re residents who signed the petition who were unaware of their rights, such as the process for withdrawing their signatures? Do you know how many residents were unaware of the powers of this statute, the taxation and the financing against their properties? Do you know why residents did not think twice or consider any negative consequences with signing the petition? Everyone I have talked to, everyone, and that's been numerous. Why? Because you are my neighbor and I trusted you. You are friendly and live down the road from me, across the lake from me. I see you. You stopped by and gently and vaguely mentioned, want, do you want to participate and help clean up the lake and see that blue stuff that's floating around? We're talking about a project here that we can do stuff with. And if asked, oh, it's a grant. And you may only need 30 or $40. If that's all it's going to be. The petitioners deliberately avoided and diverted answering financial and ordinance questions. Here's a live example. I have compliance background. I'm on the board of Sherman. Not that that should influence anything, but I'm a little bit briefed on this. I was very forthright when the petitioner stopped at my house. Quote, unquote, what statute, what Wisconsin statute were the organizers of this proposed Lake District going to be using? It was a hum and a haw. Second question, is Dunn County Treasure going to be used as the vehicle to access and collect applicable taxes or funding for this? Don't know. Look at the sky. It's the response I got. When is the grant submission deadline you're trying to meet going to take place? And I'm saying this because I'm getting this rushed feeling. I'm holding up his signing petition so that it could be done so that they could get this grant. Well, I don't know. Um, I said August or September. What are we talking? Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the responses I directly asked and received. The organizers, the so-called friends of the Red Basin, Red Cedar Basin of the petition knew they were in pursuit of implementing Wisconsin State Chapter 33. They knew. And all of its subchapters, they knew. And yet avoid, ignored, and redirected conversations to eliminate answering the questions during one-on-one -on -one discussions and for people that I spoke to that went to the meetings with lawyers sitting next to them actually asking those questions, avoidance was given to them repeatedly. I've not talked to one resident, not one, who was aware this group was pursuing Wisconsin Chapter 33. Not one. And here's some of the responses I've gotten. Upset. They were upset and actually angry with me thinking that these people did not tell them these things. They were not in belief at what I told them. Disbelief. Denying the group that they know that they go have drinks with, eat with, would not tell them the powers of the Wisconsin chapter 33. To make this real and understand the impact and here's what makes people really understand what the potential is here. Is the levy of taxation, special assessments, multiple special assessments can be driven and all go and look at people's property and assess decades of funding against property with no accountability. 
no limits, no mount limits. The meetings don't require residents to be there. And many of you know how many show up at board meetings repeatedly. It's very difficult and no absentee voting is available in this process. Just to give an example, $300,000 house isn't much these days. At 2.5 levy, which most of us know from working on boards, this is what we do assess because it's a collection option with a ceiling, $750 and a $300,000 house addition with no accountability to that. $400,000 house, not out of the range for houses on the lake, folks. $1,000 more. These are a lot of dollars for a lot of non-abiding structure for money. There are many attributes which weigh against moving this petition forward and establishing a lake district at this time, many. I'm conveying my opinion let me restate that. This is my opinion. And trust that the PRD committee will understand the importance of what I have said and what I'm going to conclude with. Because honestly, it's about morals and ethics and what was given to the public. I know it's a privilege to live on Tainer Lake. We have a great community and a trusting community. I've been honest with you telling you what I have experienced myself firsthand with the petitioner who stopped at my home, who I gave every opportunity to be truthful to me repeatedly. That person is Tom Wett, my neighbor. He denied repeatedly to me, to my face. And I'm gonna be very straightforward. I asked him about chapter 33. I asked him about the chapters, what chapter, what statute, and there was nothing. So let it be known, his application has been submitted to you for approval or review to be one of the initial board. My opinion is that it should be removed as a candidate for the board and if any known individual who cannot tell the truth doesn't need to be on a board. Correction and speaking up, it has to begin somewhere and it's begun here. It begins here. This is not who we are, deliberately deceiving our neighbors. This is not who we are, deliberately not telling the truth and ask, when asked. This is not who we are, taking away the rights of our residents through not using morals and ethics to properly inform them. This is not who we are, allowing such a petition to continue to conclude in December through February in Wisconsin when the majority of people on the lake are not here. This should have been run, folks. And I know it might be a new element to this board, but it should have been thought out about the six month period when people are actually here. When the individuals are prone to be homebound and weather on top of it, we have a lot of residents that don't come out. When Tainer Lake residents have relocated outside of Wisconsin for the winter, there's not one, there's, there's a more of a shorter time frame that could have been used, probably not more of one than when the public hearing put in the, put in, um, the Dunn County Supervisor's notes, 727, posted 728, and the hearing was 89. It's only 12 days, and that includes weekend. Sure wasn't a very long span there at all. Not enough residential discussion and proper solicitation was executed prior to the organization of this of this and chapter 33 petition. It's got a lot of power in it. This is who we are, instituting, inst instituting two powers of taxation, annual levy, special meetings, and financing additional, addition to the number of powers contained in the Wisconsin statute and not advising the petition signers that such a statute exists and we're putting that there. In my opinion, the actions of the organized petitioners, friends of the Red Cedar Basin, demonstrated a deliberate and malice attempt to push through Wisconsin chapter 33, known from prior failures. I'm gonna have to ask you to kind of wrap yep, up. Okay. I've got just as much time. 
This is not the request, but a requirement to endorse and support positive community involvement in decision making. Honesty, forthright meeting and discussions from organizers. Remove deliberately hiding undesirables from the public to mislead the residents to sign. Remove unreasonable timeframes that would deliberately make the public fail in being able to participate. And without hesitation, in my opinion, the organizers, friends of the Red Cedar Basin, should really pursue working with state legislature, Wisconsin DNR, EPA, and attempting to resolve lake problems and not use the Wisconsin statute to financially burden residents in this community with potential taxations and financing. That really the problem extends far beyond this area and we would be paying for things coming in from Chautauk or anything north of here. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Monica. Um, sorry, Diane, I asked if uh, I could have her repeat a point. Um, you had made a point um, about the timing of the hearing. Um, you gave a couple dates. You said uh, July 27th and 28th and then August 10th. Can you just repeat um, the point you were making regarding that? Sure. On 727, when I looked at the documentation for the Dunn County Board of um, Supervisors, they documented that was the first documentation that I actually saw that they assigned it to the PRD to take a hold of this and run it through this process. And then upon, um, upon the next day, Andrew Marcel published it on 828. And then it was listed as an 8-9, August 9th public hearing. That's about 12 days from, from the 28th to the 9th, inclusive of weekends. It's a very, very short time frame to be out there and about was my point. Okay. So you're just saying, like, just in general, this is a short period of time. You're not saying, like, statute requires 14 days or whatever. No, it you're requires just... 10, and that oh. was meant. Okay. But it was a very short period for any type of involvement and elimination of public being able to actually probably do some things about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Any others? We Thank you, Diane. Ben? Yeah. Kelly? Anyone else? Name and address. Hello, I'm Dick Lamers, uh, E6373, 836th Avenue, Colfax. Thank you for allowing me to speak uh, to you today. I'm here because I don't believe the Lake District will help our efforts to solve the number one problem, which is the growth of blue-green algae in our watershed. And I highlight watershed because this problem is greater than the tainer bodies that we live on, I live on. This area includes parts of eight or nine, I didn't count them, the eight or nine counties, which has over 85,000 people living in it. And these people rely health-wise and financially for the quality of the water that we live on. This proposal does not address the overall quality of the water and how to solve it by getting those 85,000 people engaged in the process. The current process that we have in this group is one of the leading groups in that effort with Chase and a number of other people in the organization spearheading efforts of other counties and collaborating with them and getting the all communities, not only people that live directly on the water, but the agricultural community, et cetera, they're doing some fantastic work. I was at a meeting, I think two weeks ago, uh, up in Colfax, where they had close to 70 people in the room. I'll bet 65 of those 70 people were farmers, and they talked about water quality. They had charts that I use in presenting water quality. So they're engaged, they're working on it. This Lake District is not something that I believe will make that happen. 
I would propose that the process to approve this would be put on a county referendum rather than vote by the county supervisors. I lost my faith in the current process when I saw that public comment won't be allowed at their meeting on this topic. One of the most important decisions that they will make concerning the health and financial stability of our county, and they don't want the public to comment. Mr. Chairperson, when I'm done, I would ask that you please explain this reasoning. I remember years ago uh, when the shoreline ordinance was proposed, we spent a night discussing it. Um, it was postponed. And two weeks or a month later, we did it again. There were over 40 people, 20 on one side, 20 on the other side, speaking on why we needed that ordinance. So it was a good diplomatic, democratic discussion. But now the county supervisors are not going to allow the comment before they make such a significant decision for not only the people that live on the lake, but the entire county and what is going to be held over us for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Um, I, I would say that the, 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 uh, as I understand it, the, the situation with regard to, to public testimony at the, County Board is uh, set up by the fact that this was an, an item that was heard at a public hearing. Not everything that the board decides is heard, heard at a public hearing. It maybe just come through this committee, and 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 so the the rules of the public hearing process are that uh, to be fair to everybody, that that everyone has a chance to speak at the public hearing or to submit comments at the public hearing. Uh, but once that hearing is over, then the public testimony, additional public testimony is not generally allowed. Now, I may not agree with that. In fact, I don't, but uh, that, is, that is the rules that we're going by, as I understand it. One more comment. To the previous speaker's um, address, I wasn't aware of that meeting. I wasn't aware of the public comments needed. I've been working on water since I moved into this county 15 years ago, and I missed it. The information on how they got people engaged and asked for public comment was insufficient to get that overall connection with the people that live here. So if anything, if there's any way that we can say, no, that wasn't right, and we're going to change that by asking for public comment again before you make that decision, I would ask this committee to bring that up and put that to a vote first before you vote on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Good morning. My name is Tom Bills. I live at E5408 770th Avenue in Menominee. And I was one of the members of the Friends of the Red Cedar Basin that helped um, develop and uh, carry out the petition process. I don't know what happened to uh, in, in the case of the one individual that spoke about um, asking questions and, and that they weren't answered, but we did use volunteer help and we trained all of them. We gave them uh, a list of frequently asked questions. And I know that for a fact because I developed that list with both the questions and a response that would be appropriate. Um, I don't know how uh, 
if that's the case, I don't know how this volunteer didn't know about chapter 33 and didn't know about uh, Dunn County uh, in reference to your questions. But I know for a fact that he knew this information because we worked extensively together to put this information uh, out there to people. A reminder, when it comes to the Lake District, there's a Lake District board that is the initial board is appointed by the county and by the township. And then uh, at the annual, the inaugural meeting, and then annual meetings subsequently that the board is voted on. A concern was brought up to me that the board was going to have too much power. And I had to remind this person that asked me the question that the Lake District Board is not like a county board or a township board. In a county board, we elect supervisors that make decisions based on our comments, based on our best interest. You guys make the votes. In a Lake District, everyone in the Lake District has an individual vote on each matter. The board members themselves only have three responsibilities. And those responsibilities are to run meetings, to develop budgets, <clears throat> excuse me, and the third is to plan projects. All of these three responsibilities are based on the input and um, dependent on the approval of the entire Lake District membership. So everyone gets a vote on this, and it is a true democracy. Um, Mr. Lamers brought up the fact that he would like more public comment in a county meeting. Um, there were other issues that were brought up that have all been addressed in state law. And it was learned about two months ago that the Lake District met all four of the requirements put forth in chapter 33 of state law. Uh, I see no reason not to move forward. Um, that's all I have. If there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Anyone have questions for Mr. Bills? All right. Thanks. Tom. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, Yes, we'll move on to uh, our regular agenda, um, staff reports. Heather, you've been very patient. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll at least say good morning. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't have anything to add to my report, but if you have any questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Ed, you want to say something? I didn't see your hand. Okay, I'm, I apologize. The order of the pizzas from here, then. Okay. Yeah, name name and address, Ed. E fifty two thirty three seven hundred fiftieth Avenue. Been on the lake since nineteen. Just state your name too. What's that? Just state your name too. Ed Laventure. What else you need? <laughs> Vietnam nineteen sixty six sixty seven. It's always an okay. important one because you talk about programs. I'll, I might jump around here, but like one quick, I'll go with this one is is going to. A lake district is complicated and it, it's something we don't need because it adds another fourth layer of government. Fifth layer, depends how you look at it. I could go up to 10 because I was on the Health, Students, Health and Human Service Board with Tom almost 10 years. And one of the things they did is start the, when the Community Health Partnership went bankrupt, it was supposed to be taking care of all these nice kids they formed and the, they picked up the one from down by Madison and they took over, changed their name three to four times, but they run the people with disabilities. What can't hear me? Can't hear me? Uh, yeah. All right, I can't lean that far ahead. I can't there, maybe that'll work. There we go. How's that? That better? Yes. Anyway, 
long story short, if I get to it, always I'll forget what I'm saying. But they, that they, they that's a that was a quasi governmental system that they set up. And Dunn County approved it, St. Croix County, Eau Claire. But long story short, the minute they took control of going to take care of all these people with disabilities, my daughter only had our daughter only had one program that she used a little bit of money from a whopping maybe eighty dollars a month. They took that away from her. That's been ten years ago. We continue to pay it, so she has one activity that she enjoys and can do. There's other activities we do that they wouldn't even pay for, but that's beside the point. It, the idea is if you're going to do your job, you got to do it. It's going to be important to take care of the people. If you're going to be an organization, it's going to take care of the people. Well, the lake, the get to the lake idea is, is it's pretty hard to take care of Lake Tainer and forget about the watershed that Stout will have a hearing on again. Every, every March, they have a big hearing at Stout on it. And the watershed. And the part of the watershed, of course, is the Hay River. Well, that, that got cleaned up in 1980. But to get that done, it took a big law firm in Milwaukee to get it to work. They had a big part in how the money was distributed and how things were done. So I'm, number one, opposed to it because I don't want another layer of government. The DNR is responsible for cleaning our water. That's their job. We've been paying them every year since I've been alive, whatever, been paying taxes. And it's the EPA's job. Army Corps engineers, they all have their fingers in it. NCR, NCR, I'm going to give you that quick example where they were involved in it in 1982 on our road and the DNR and so on. There was some staff who with whoever did what. They showed pictures of what they were going to do on my, my mother-in-law's garage door. Anyway, when they got done with their project because they changed it to fit their system, they sped up the pollution into our lake. So if you go to the lower Lake Tainer Bay, if you go diving down there, which I had a certified diver go down there, he's a rescue diver and so on and so forth. The right-hand side of the bay, if you're standing this way, facing north, the right hand of the bay is nice sandy bottom. Left hand is powdered pollution is all the manure and so on off the field is about this deep. And uh, my other neighbor who's dead now, but I have copies of the pictures, took pictures of the foam as it came off the lake in the spring to be foam this high across that west end of the bay. So a lot of things to think about long-term up and above the, the, the whole watershed. So I recommend you don't approve this to move this forward in any way, shape, or form if you're going to take care of the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Because we all got to be healthy. Our kids have to be healthy. I've been fighting for many years. Our youngest daughter, we've only driven her from the hospital clinic so all her life to Eau Claire and here. But we've driven her to the Twin Cities for 42 years to keep her alive with the brain surgeries and so on. And uh, so if you're going to take care of people, you got to look at the whole picture. And Lake District is not the answer, period. We definitely need to have the DNR do its job in the state. They have the money. They have the control of the entire district, the entire watershed. It's their ballpark. Nobody else's. We don't need another layer of difficulty. So thank you very much. Any questions? Questions? <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Yep. I'm sorry. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. My name is Eric Gates. I live at uh, E5298, 750th Avenue, Menominee. Um, I'd just like to make a comment as far as the whole process that this has gone through. Um, I am one of those residents that was approached at my front door hey, do you want to clean up the lake? Of course I want to clean up the lake. Well, we can do a little part here and it's not going to cost much. We need to get this association set up so that we can get grants. Skipped by all the, what is this going to cost me? Ask the question, what is this going to cost me? Oh, it's not going to be much, $30, $40 a year, something like that. Didn't go any, like as Kelly mentioned, into the statutes as far as when you dig into this, what is the long term? What can they do? All these different things that can be set up was not covered, was not addressed. This is a bigger picture. The Lakeshore residents aren't going to be able to do anything in the grand picture. Ed was correct. This is a DNR issue. This is a state issue. This is a county issue. Strapping this on the backs of the, the lakefront owners, 
while we use the lake, we enjoy the lake. My kids swim in the lake. I want it clean, but strapping us with, I'm in the category where my, my values have gone up. It's going to be close to a thousand dollars a year for me. Extra taxes that I will pay now for what? We, we can slap a bandaid. We can do all these things. And at the end of the day, it's the watershed. It's happening up at Lake Chutec. It's all flowing down into Tainter. So by setting this up, what are we really doing except having another meeting, as I mentioned, another layer of government? It doesn't make sense to me. Now, I'm the first to admit, I signed the petition because I wanted to help clean up. But I also was not giving the information that I should have gotten. That's wrong. Okay. Wasn't told that, hey, if you change your mind, you need to do this. None of that. It was, thank you very much. Sign it. Off they go. Do I get it? Like, do you leave anything? Do I get anything? Nope. Shh, off they go. Oh, well, I guess we signed up for a petition. So I'd like to publicly state right now, if I could remove my mine and my wife's name, we both agree, we'd like to be removed from the petition. But guess what? It's too late. We had X time back in August to go to the county to be able to have that removed. Were we told about that? Nope. You missed it. Sorry. So this whole process, while in good intent, everybody wants to do the right thing. We're completely barking up the wrong tree. And if you want to say, well, it's the lakefront owners that, that, that enjoy the lake, well, there's a lot of people that enjoy that lake that don't live on the lake. There's a lot of boat trailers at the boat landing. There's all kinds of people that come and use the lake besides just the owners that actually have property up against it. Now, granted, like I said, I want the lake cleaned up. I want to move towards something that actually is sustainable and cleans it up permanently for good. But we're going the wrong direction here. And in my opinion, setting up this lake district is a mistake. And it's only going to just be a big mess and a fiasco going forward. And it's going to breed a lot of discontent and frustration with everybody when it should be a state issue. It should be a county issue saying we're going to take the time. We're going to put the priorities where it should be. And that is putting the resources in and have the communication with the state and take viable steps to actually clean up the lake. So that's my part. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Wayne Smith, N7490. 515th Street. Trying to organize uh, uh, thoughts as far as uh, how I, I can present this. Um, new to the Tainer Lake area, uh, we, we bought the property in, in 16. Finally, we were able to move up in 19. Living on a fixed income. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, uh, knowing the kind of taxes we pay already, to have an entity that doesn't have any idea what it's going to cost us. And uh, as Eric said, the water, it'd be nice to use the water for four or five months. Um, we can't. But it's not just taint or lake. I mean, it, it comes from all over. We talk about the watershed. Um, it's a bigger issue. So what happens when all this money is is channeled into who knows what to make Tainter Lake a better place? Um, it, it doesn't seem to me that it, it's going to correct any of the problems that, that affect Tainter Lake. And Tainter Lake is just is not my lake. It's a community lake. And we are property owners on the lake by choice. Um, I think we deserve um, something better. And I think the state is responsible 
at least state and DNR, to try to do something about all these areas. But I understand there's only a, a certain amount of money to be able to do this stuff. Um, the county does a great job with the monies they have, but it's predicated, as I understand it, on what Madison says they need for everything to get done. Um, I, I, as Eric <laughs> said, I signed the document. Um, gentleman came to the door talking about making the lake cleaner. Gosh, who wouldn't want that? Um, but never talking about how much it's going to cost. And uh, I'm not sure the makeup of the property owners around Tainer Lake, but I suspect there's a number of them that are on fixed income. They've been there for quite a while. Can't afford another thousand dollars a year in taxes, or who knows what it might be. Um, so I, I'm not in favor of that entity being able to go forward without all those questions that aren't, to my satisfaction, being answered. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Okay. Um, I forget where we are now. Uh, we're at uh, uh, six B, I guess, right? Heather got cut off on her report. Okay, so all right, yeah. Wanna... Why don't you finish up, Heather? I'm sorry about that. No, that's that's fine. I, I really don't have anything to add. So if there was just any questions. Any questions for Heather? Okay, thank you very much. Chase, or survey division, Tom? I don't have anything to ask unless there's any specific questions. Okay. Let's move on then, Ann. Um, I just wanted to add, just to make sure everybody knows, I didn't forget about the non-owner occupied. And I'll make sure that'll be on the next agenda but we had a lot for this one for me. Um, but yeah, we just finished up our interviews for the open position and that's all I really had to add. Unless anyone has questions. Any questions? Okay. Chase. I guess if there's any specific questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer them or talk more about it. One thing just to call out, given the interest of time, would be um, related to the large private well monitoring program that's planned for this coming year and future years, potentially. Um, as of yesterday, we were up to 768 residents have signed up for their well test. So summer 2023, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Mr. Any Chairman? Yes. Yeah, I am. Um, Chase, uh, you know, I, I this is probably too complicated and too large a question, but you m noted in the report that you're looking at workload um, and staff availability um, uh, given the Inflation Reduction Act. Could you just say a tiny little bit more about that? I mean, is it is it likely, for example, that you might recommend not accepting funds given staff availability? Um, certainly. So um, Inflation Reduction Act uh, estimates right now are approximately $3 billion are going to come through NRCS, um, our USDA partners within the state of Wisconsin. Um, right now, NRCS does not have the uh, staffing capacity to implement that amount of funding when they're used to getting about $300 million. So right now, they're currently turning to county staff uh, as a part 
you know, long trusted partners to uh, help implement those funds. And those could be in the forms of contribution agreements with the federal government, um, NRCS particularly, which we have done in the past. And right now, um, as that news hits us, we are in the process of uh, trying to evaluate what is our capacity and uh, can we take on additional work uh, in the realm of conservation that these this money would be funding. And it's giving me some pause to reflect on what are some of our other programs within the, the department, our division, how those, um, how we might rank and prioritize those in relation to uh, funding that can help improve watersheds, um, can help improve um, groundwater, can help improve other conservation measures, um, assist uh, landowners in meeting those uh, compliance requirements, et cetera. So right now I don't have anything specific as to um, what that is, but we do have, um, in addition to the IRA funding, other requests coming from other municipalities. I mentioned the Village of Elk Mound right. at last meeting uh, about a water quality trading program. So I think at some point um, I will be coming to this group and asking all of you for your guidance on how we might prioritize some of our services and our workload, given the fact that we have opportunities that may never come around in our careers again exactly. for some of this federal funding and how we might, um, I guess, evaluate how we how we implement that within the county. Um, certainly an option would be to turn it away and to not participate in some of those things, but um, that's... Uh, that's not uh, that's pretty uh, hard to say right now, and I would I would like to reevaluate some of the other things that we're doing to try to get a better handle on where we can go forward. So, agreed. Thank you, Chase. Chairman. Sure. Chase, uh, can any of those grants be used for like a limited term employees, like that? I mean, that would maybe take some the uh, stress off. Certainly, and that's a very good point, and one that we're con we're considering um, is. You know, for example, there you know maybe there's partnerships that we can make with other counties, uh, neighboring counties um, for LTE type positions, um, whether they're housed here within Dunn County or housed in another county. But how we can set up a contribution agreement to help to help do that? Um, I actually I think that's probably one of the main things we're going to look at, given the workload we current ha currently have with staff and the programs that we're asked to implement. Um, but yes, there is there is that potential, and that will be explored for sure. Chase, how how specific are the funding allocations to NRCS? Are they specific program ident or are they more general? So they've they've laid it out through the the existing infrastructure within NRCS or USDA. So looking at their Equip Environmental okay. uh, Quality Incentives Program, RCPP, the Resource Conservation Partner something or other program. Um, there's um, CSP, Conservation Stewardship Program. Some of, the, some of the existing infrastructure that they currently have set up is where that funding will be coming through. Okay. Uh, the main bulk of those IRA funds are supposed to be for um, towards climate change, climate resiliency, that sort of thing. So look, identifying practices that um, help support that effort. So in, in the conservation world, those are very typical uh, practices that we already are implementing cover crops, no-till, soil erosion, um, that sort of thing. So I think the infrastructure is there. It's just a matter of how do we get it done. So. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay, then let's move on. Let's see where are we are at the end of the agenda. Um, the conservation poster contest judging without objection we'll we'll move that to the end and uh take the time to do that um so that gets us down to 8a the multi-discharge variance program it's you again. okay yep, yep that's me i think um the multi-discharger variance program, we've talked about that um, at this committee level in the past. Um, currently, we are um, involved with that program since about 2000, uh, yeah, 2020. The last several years, we've been receiving funding from um, point source discharges of phosphorus within the watershed of the Red Cedar and the Lower Chippewa Rivers. 
Um, that is a state program that's set up to try to reduce phosphorus um, discharges from point sources, such as wastewater treatment plants from municipalities, cheese factories, things like that. Uh, we are in, a, in the process. Uh, we currently have for 2020, excuse me, last year, 2022, approximately $17,000 that we are bringing into the county for such program. And we're looking at for 2023, another 13,000. So um, I'm requesting uh, that we uh, take a little bit more of a formal action on just our participation in that. Some of the um, agreements and um, I guess application process within the state um, is asking for a bit more of a formal commitment than me, Chase, as county conservation is saying, let's participate. And I know the PRD committee has supported this effort in the past. Um, there's no, at this time, the state is not requiring a formal resolution adopted by county board, but I just wanted to take the opportunity to revisit that program. Um, in the packet, there was a, a bit of a, a handout on what that program was about. And uh, I guess at this time, just requesting if you still support that, if you could just through motion and action, just continue to acknowledge that we will mm -hmm. continue to participate in that. And we've made the decision to participate in this program based on funding level. If, uh, you know, if the funding level gets to a point where it's so low that it's not conducive to our staff time, you know, a thousand dollars or something, um, our staff times would be much more than that. But at this point it's over $10,000 where we feel like there's a benefit to invest staff time in it. So. So. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Diane. Um, I would, I would move that the PR and D committee endorse, uh, Participation in the multi discharge variance program. That works just fine. Is there a second? I'll second that. Monica seconds. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Northam carries. Thanks. Um, I'm, I, if people could indulge me, I would I would like to take a quick, a short five minute break before we do the next discussion. All right. Okay. Bring us back to order. Um, the last item is the uh, proposed. Lake Tainter Rehabilitation District order and the initial board of commissioners nomination. So I know Gary has to leave at some point and I think we can get through this fairly quickly. So I'll ask Chase to kind of provide us with a, a sort of a review of the, of, the, of the order. I won't ask him to read all of the legal descriptions, although that would be fun. <laughs> Uh, so take it away, Chase. Okay, thank you. So in the meeting packet, uh, starting on page here, 38, um, is the draft order uh, creating the Tainter Lake Rehabilitation District. So this goes back a little bit of quick summary of history here. Um, in the October meeting of this committee, um, you decided to uh, approve or uh, forward the public hearing report that was required by statute to the full county board um, with the recommendation of establishing the district. The county board then um, sent it back to committee to develop the formal order and establish the nominations for the initial board of commissioners, which are still blank on this order right now. So that is where we are at right now. Um, as a part of this order, there's also the um, inclusion and requirement um, to define the property. And I would note within the, the document, um, this legal description that Chairman Quinn re referenced earlier um, was uh, an arduous task, but um, I could not have done, actually, I didn't do any of it. Um, Tom Carlson did, <laughs> Rachel did with the uh, um, Land Information Office and, and others uh, within other departments as well. Um, the formal legal description was is not a requirement of the petition. Um, it is a requirement though of um, the order and adopting um, such districts. So that's where this was developed. Um, quick summary, um, in doing so, um, there were several properties that um, appear to not meet the intent of what the petitioners um, 
requested um, petition for, and those being um, riparian or non-riparian properties. So uh, there's a few in here that were discovered that um, were properties within properties. They, uh, um, when defining the legal description, uh, the the most efficient way to 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 um, create a legal description would be to define the exterior boundary of that district. And in doing so, there are there were four parcels that um, were enclosed within another parcel. Therefore, they are technically non-riparian. Um, and rather than trying to describe the legal description around all these little individuals, um, it was most efficient to describe the external boundary and then exclude those parcels. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the legal description, you will see uh, these exclusions. Uh, and that is um, my understanding typical practice for uh, legal description writing um, is to exclude some that um, just don't fit within the, the, the described boundary. Additionally, there were other parcels that um, were excluded uh, in review of this because they were non-riparian. However, um, they were included uh, previously because of um, the way that the, the mapping lied. Uh, however, they were non-riparian and those properties with in consultation with the petitioners and what they requested um, were uh, removed. And in total, there was um, 11 parcels that were are being excluded from the Lake District in addition to what um, the towns and, and county owned properties. Um, so th that is consistent with statute. Properties may be removed um, based on um, certain requirements. Um, however, properties cannot be added and no properties are being added at this time. So within the packet, you'll see the um, proposed Tainter Lake Rehabilitation District map. Um, this is the final map and as well as all of the um, parcel numbers associated with it. So at this point in time, um, the next step is to uh, forward this order to the full county board uh, for their January 18th decision of whether to um, uh, approve the formation of the district or deny the district. But prior to doing so, um, there is the um, requirement to establish the initial board of commissioners, uh, which um, you can see within the order, there is three um, that will be um, representing the initial board as well as one that will uh, be a representative of this of the land conservation or PRD committee. So in the um, packet here under the order, let me back up through all that legal description. Those areas that have the X's, we need to fill those names in today. So um, within the packet was all the applicants that um, were identified through the application process um, you requested for nominations. Um, and I guess at that time, this time, I'll turn it back over to you. Uh, yeah, and we decided at our last meeting to do this by a kind of a ballot vote. So we'll do uh, an initial ballot and then see where we're at and, and go until we have consensus on three candidates. Um, Diana, are you willing to, are you, can you communicate your votes to Chase so he can put them on a ballot? Yes, and Chase has expertly arranged that for oh, me. Good. So thanks okay. to Chase. Yeah, I, I'm in. All right, great. <sighs> Only one. You could take more than one. We will know. <laughs> I would just comment uh, as to what is on the ballot. So the all 10 applica applicants for the nominations are on this ballot. Um, and at this point in time, you would be voting for three. So we need to narrow this down to three individuals. So once you've filled them out, if you want to get it back to me and I can run some tallies and then, uh, we'll go from there. Oops. Yes, pick pick three. Yep.
Oh, I don't know. It's not a mistake. Okay. Okay, I believe I have them tallied. So the results right now as they stand are five votes for Gerald or Jerry Porter, five votes for Zach Raff, two votes for Al Brown, one vote for Kent Henschen, and one vote for Pete Heimdall. Okay. Um, another ballot, perhaps, with the with the people who got votes. Another, or, or do you um, want to? Might I suggest that we have two two clear ones with five, and we could vote for the have those as two, and then vote for the third. It yeah. might seem a little okay. more. Um, and you want to include everyone in the third in the second ballot, then, or, who are just the people who receive votes? Okay, everyone. So just uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna vote for Jerry Porter or Zach Graff, but everybody else will include them. There's another one. Should have another. Oh. So we're voting one. One. No, we're voting for. Yeah, one, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But not Zach Graff or Jerry Porter. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, Mike. Okay, round two results are four votes for Al Brown and one vote for Peter Heimdall. Got it done. Okay. Um, and the read? other item is, is... I'll just re review one more time. Okay. So the, the three names that I will be enter into the order that will be presented to county board will be Jerry Gerald Porter, Zach Raff, and Al Brown. Is that how you understand it? Okay. Um, okay. So the other the other uh, decision about uh, suit about committee members would be the representative from the county board. And what we had, we're going to do was uh, inquire among our colleagues if there was anyone who was interested. And then uh, vote between those who were. So uh, I did have a conversation with um, Jim Zanz, who lives on the lake. And Jim, I think his, I, I know his, 
I know he's really thoughtful about this. So he said he would be willing to serve. If anyone else had other conversations? And as a side note, then, um, what we are going to, I think, recommend for procedure is that uh, uh, the county policy be that every two years, uh, when they when the county board after after the county board election, this position will be up for uh, renomination. So, what whoever new supervisors are will make a rec this committee will make a recommendation to the to the I guess probably to the county manager at that point in time. I'm not sure how we're going to do it, but okay. Um, should we do a? Let's do a another ballot right on the back. Or we only have a nominee, don't we? Okay. Uh, all in favor of Jim Zahn's as the nominee, as a county board nominee? Aye. Aye. Okay. And that's that. Anything else that needs to be individually decided? That um. I think that's the the main okay main points. Um, I guess so maybe uh, to, maybe um, an action for we did, yeah we need to take action on forwarding this uh, order to the to the county board. Do I have a motion for that? Yeah, motion. Gary, second. And I will second it. Mike. Uh, okay. All in favor of uh, forwarding the motion as approved to the as uh, completed to the county board. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Say no. Motion is approved. Thank you. And I think what we have left, and Gary, you can, uh, you, is the poster contest. Oh. So um, I guess I'll leave this up for your discretion if you would like to adjourn the meeting. Yeah. Um, and then we can take your time yeah, I, I think that'd that. be I think that'd be most expeditious to do this I'll adjourn the meeting for today and we'll uh, take up uh, post meeting uh, judging the poster contest I guess I would just note if I may that the action that is being conducted for this poster contest is nothing that's a required action Efficient, on this committee so it's it's simply just a, we'd like volunteer to service on youth volunteer education. service for the county yeah Where, where is this? I've oh, got everything set up okay. over there. So um, if we're adjourned, I'll take you over there. And yeah, we're adjourned.